You go to the. Uh... That's not bad, mate. I'll be pleased with that if you like. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, feathers, it's about 30 pounds in here. How did you get that in? down on the boat the same weekend that I fitted the solar panel uh, and I made the other videos as well about the boat and about the uh, hit diesel heater which is on my channel um, yeah I'm just going to show you really while it's in my head how I done the solar panel and how I uh, fitted it all and how it works and what make it is how much I paid etc etc because when I started looking on line it's very hard to know exactly what you want when you've never done it before um, I looked at the cheap panels on, on Amazon, like 40 quid and stuff for everything, and I'm just thinking that it probably wouldn't cut it um, on a boat, really. Uh, so I decided to go a bit more than that. I think I paid 120 pound, it was reduced, managed to get 25% off, I think it was, I had a deal going. So I suppose there was about 150, 160, and I got it for 120 in the end. So, uh, and I don't think, oh, there's a few tubes of mastic to buy, obviously three tubes of mastic, um, a few more bits of cable, fittings and stuff, I suppose an extra five or five or ten or something like that, and that, that's the whole job done. Um, and I'll go through it with you exactly what I've done. Um, and let's start outside, I suppose, with the solar panel itself. It's a lovely morning out here today, so we can have a, yeah, if we just turn you around and you can look out the uh, windows there. It is a lovely day. That's James's boat. He's asleep still. So you get up nice and early for you guys, just to make a video. It's eight o'clock on a Sunday. So here we are. Absolutely lovely. Bit, nip, bit of a nip in the air. So keep the heat in. Right, so let's uh, get on the outside of the boat and uh, show you exactly what I've done. So I had a bit of a luck because I I didn't measure the I didn't measure the panel. Uh, I just went online and thought, oh, that that that's a nice, decent sized panel, and I'm sure it'll fit. I come here uh, yesterday to fit it. And if you have a look at the way it's fitted in there, <laughs> it's absolutely snug. So that's it. Look, in a nutshell. It's fitted in there, an absolute treat. And that's charging the batteries now, as we speak. All three batteries are being charged as we were. Uh, not much, because the sun isn't very warm and it's not very high, so, but it's, it's charging and it's rising up. Uh, so the panel, what I've done, clean the roof, obviously, give the roof a good clean, and then I wiped it over with like a UPVC cleaner, so the mastic stick nicely. Um, put the panel on, squared it all up, drew a pencil line around the outside very faintly and then loaded it with loads of mastic. I put a double bead of mastic all the way around the outside, a double bead, so that it's continuous all the way around. So if any water did get in there, it can't get through the first one. And if it gets through the first one, there's a second one there. And then I just went zigzag all the way across, every four inches across the whole panel. I 
just leave it like a five mil, six mil bead of mastic all the way across. Uh, get your panel, lift it up nice and squarely, down exactly where you go so you don't pull the mastic at all, straight down. And then what I've done, I've put four, I, I pushed it all out with my hands, made sure it was all nice and smooth, and then put four half buckets of water on the corners here, left them on there all night. Um, and then I've, I've obviously, after, it leaves a little gap here, so I've gone round it all, um, just with a, a, a bit of a neat mastic done, if you like, and just done the, the mastic in. As you can see, it's a pretty smart job, so there's no mastic anywhere, but it's all nicely sealed, and it's, uh, yeah, a real nice job. So, well, hopefully. <laughs> so let's go and show you the wiring over there, exactly what I've done. So it's always a bit daunting drilling a hole in your boat, especially the roof. So what we got this side, it's going to be a bit bright here. I'll get up right up so you can see. Right. You've got two wires that come already on the panel, which is on this little piece here. And on the ends of them panels, you've got two little waterproof connectors. Well, I cut them off um, because you can't get them through the gland. This is the gland on top of the roof. It's screwed down, it's mastic all up and filled with mastic. Um, so you can't get them big connectors through the glands. So they're pretty worthless really. I mean, they're meant to stay on the outside of the boat so you can unclip it, but trouble is with that, they're out in the elements then and they're gonna leak and they're gonna cause problems. So I've only got wire out here now. If it needs doing, I'll just cut it again and join it again. So that's not a problem. Hopefully the panel will last for years anyway. So there's the panel there. So basically the wires come through into this gland. I mean, in fact, the gland I bought on, um, I think I bought it on eBay, it was like seven pounds. So bloody cheap. And I've used stainless steel screws and that's all screwed down, straight down, and all filled with mastic. And it's all, you know, spot on, so it's all good. Um, and that's that side of it. I filled up the glands as well, the holes with mastic, to make sure that they're all filled up. So they're all sort of waterproof. So I will add a few, because we've been pulling them about, I can see they're pulling in a bit. So I'm gonna um, put a bit more mastic in them, really. So let's go inside and see the other bits, yeah? So them cables obviously come down now into the inside, which is nice, because once you've stuck the panel down and you've done the, uh, done everything outside it's uh, all inside work really which was nice so the the two cables come down they come down to about here on my boat roughly they they finished about there unfortunately so I've got James he's down here the weekend doing a few thing jobs on his boat um, I uh, got him to solder them together and heat shrink them to extend them I've used a bit of the cable that they've sent uh, onto here so these two here come from the solar panel and they go into the controller as it says um, and you can see my battery there being charged look it's flashing there nicely nearly full up and I've had the heater on all night and then these two cables here come down and they go one to the or I've got that going down underneath here and it goes underneath to the back of the, all the where all the wires are in the back everybody will know who's got an arvo where they are and there's a, a negative uh, uh, bolt that I bolted on that cable to. So the negative, the black uh, wire bolts to there. And then the red one run right down. I went underneath here, right down underneath, outside, into the engine bay, along the engine bay. And then it comes to the two controllers, which is, I've put isolators, I should say, not controllers. Um, so basically the top, the top isolator let me put that seat up, it'll be much better. The heat, the uh, blowing you can hear is that heater down, I've got the heater on. Um, so that come with the boat, the, the big one, and on the top it's got both, it's got two battery on the right and one battery on the left. So I've got a starter battery which is number one and the leisure battery is number two. Um, and then if you want them both on, you can put them both on. And the idea of that is if you're going out to a mark and it's an hour away, you put it on both and the engine's charging both batteries all the time uh, while you're driving. So, and then what happens is with this, uh, the cables come down from the uh, controller, solar panel controller. So you've got two cables. One's gone to the black that I've told you, the, neg uh, the negative's gone onto that um, 
negative point. Uh, and then the red comes into here. And the red goes on to number two, which is the leisure battery, onto the uh, old controller. And with that as well, you put another two cables. So you have a cable that's bolted to number one, uh, again, and number two. They go back out through the boat, and then they come back into this new controller on the bottom. And what that enables you to do is when you switch all the batteries off um, and leave the boat for good, uh, uh, this goes down to the bottom here, and that switches all the batteries off, so everything's killed on the boat apart from the bilge pump. Um, when I switch this on, that enables me to charge the starter battery as well as the leisure batteries. So I just switch that on, and that charges the um, that charges the starter battery. So if you don't want to start uh, charge the starter battery, just leave it off, and it won't charge it. But if you want all, all three batteries, I've got two leisure batteries on here because I've got two leisure batteries on number two, and they're they're uh, in parallel, so they're. Um, they're joined up together like a set of jump leads really across the two batteries so it doesn't make it uh, 24 volt still makes it 12 volt but it gives you a lot more ampage you've got 200 amps so yeah really good on the leisure side so I've got no problems with using any lights or whatever when I'm out at sea no problem whatsoever so that is so just to confirm that was already here this is a new one that I fitted for the uh, solar uh, for the um, solar panel um, so you take that off, put an extra cable on this side, on number one, put an extra cable on number two, put the solar positive onto number two as well, uh, and put that back. Fix this up, both the big cables come either side of one of these, don't matter what side, just put one on one and one on the other. And what that does is when you switch it on, it joins the cables together, enabling the, the uh, charger battery to become live so that they can all be charged at the same time. That's all that does. But it's a great way of doing it if you ain't got to muck about, you know, um, trying to wire them all up. And you haven't got to go to the batteries to do anything. That's what, what you've done there, that, that's all you have to do. A great way, so I can lay here, I'm laying here in bed, my head's here, and I can just go over and switch them off at night. So um, I leave the lights on outside, switch them off, and if there's any problems, I can just switch the uh, controller on and the lights will come on straight away. So I like that idea. Um, so that's it really. The controller I fitted a little bit of a, because if you have got an Arvo and you're doing this, it is a bit of a nightmare. This controller here is on a back wall. I didn't want to screw it because obviously you see the screws on the outside. It's only like five mil thick, maybe six mil thick. So what I've done, I made a piece of timber up, as you can see over the top there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, uh, same size as the uh, controller. And then I screwed the controller to the wood and then I've pushed the wood with this special mastic that goes back. I've, I've actually used this uh, pot of uh, wet wipes, put a roll of tape underneath it and sat it on it, glued it to the back wall. So that is only glued on, but that last, that's brilliant that, it's showing through the outside there. Um, and it's good and strong. So uh, yeah, that works well. Um, at the moment that we're, um, it's telling me now that the battery's full up. I could switch my starter battery on actually to give that a top, which I will do. I wonder if that'll change that. I'll switch the start battery. The start battery's now on. There you go now, look. Now it's charging a bit, so it's at half. Because it thinks, the controller thinks it's one battery. So it, 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 it's, it's doing a, a search and it can find that I'm only halfway now. So the, now the starter battery's having a bit of solar charge as well. So that works really good, the first time I've done that. Really clever. And that's putting through 0.7 amps. It's on there. That's what, the, what it's charging at the moment. Um, I've got 0.1 amp uh, for out. If I wanted to put anything on these two wires, I could run a light or something light off the solar panel. And then on the top of there, look, I've got two USBs that I can plug me, me phone in or a, or a, or a tablet or, la or iPad or whatever. What I will do with that, what I might do with that is in the summer, I might have a little fan on here, just clip it on there, put it on the USB and see if that'll run a, a, a little fan there. That'd be such a nice addition, um, blowing on your head sort of thing and costing you nothing to run. And I think if you push it three times, well, uh, 
and that tells you the 16, 16 degrees in here. So yeah, it's clever. What a unit is that is, how hot the unit is. So yeah, uh, uh, the actual make of the, is eco-worthy. That's what I uh, think. So if you want one online, go online. This was 136 watt panel. Panel size was 103 by 690. Um, and that's that's it really. Controller comes with it. All the wire comes with it. There was enough wire to do the whole thing apart from the two isolators, I had to get about four, two, four hundred pieces of I had an old set of jump leads that I had, that James had, that he gave me, and he made up two little cables for me, which was great. Um, yeah, that's all you've got to get yourself is a couple of bits of cable, about four hundred longs to go out and back round to connect to the other isolator. I mean, they're literally right underneath each other, so you don't need a lot of cable. But what you've got to remember is when you're undoing it and stuff and working with it, you need enough to pull out to work with it without undoing everything. Uh, so that's why I like them a little bit longer. So that's it, so it's all good. Um, I'll just set you up here. Back to it again. So that's it, so kit cost me uh, 120 quid. Um, so I was well chuffed with that and there was about a tenner's bits of bits and pieces. James gave me a hand because he'd done the uh, soldering of the wires and all that which was, uh, I haven't got a clue really. Um, yeah so all in all it seems like it's a decent bit of kit. Um, online I see it's got quite a few negative marks on remarks on there. Um, I tend to look over them and have a look myself um, because to be quite honest with you if you've bought one like me and it's working fine, you probably wouldn't go back to the company and tell them. You'd only write a review if it was uh, if it went wrong and you had a problem with it. So that is why <coughs> I feel you always get a lot of negative re remarks, more than good ones, because you only bother going back to the company to leave a bit of uh, you know uh, a remark or something. What's happened with yourself if it's something's gone wrong and they're not in interested in giving you a new unit or something. But yeah, I mean, it's up to you what you buy, but that's what I've gone for. We'll uh, go back on it in a few months, just to tell you, you know, how it's getting on, etc., etc. And hopefully it'll be thumbs up. Um, all looking good at the moment anyway. So uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you've uh, not seen the channel before, at Sharksmith Angling, go on there, have a look. If you like what you see, we have a bit of a crack here and there, me and James. Um, yeah subscribe a uh, like uh, leave a few comments if you want i love a few comments uh good or bad it gives me a bit of a laugh um because that's all i do with them um yeah and that's about it really so uh enjoy your sunday and uh i'll speak to you later so from sharksmith angling see you later everyone Ta -da.